Nice to hear that syrupy voice again here. It's been 20 days since the Wolves last played at Allstate Arena as we get a look at our starters and scratches there presented by Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. Move better, live better. Visit ibji.com. Chris Porter on the left side scored his first goal as a Wolves player last night. Shorty and Ty Ratty on the right. Keith coin in the middle of that tandem up front. Mark Charney and David Shields man the points. Matt Climey in net tonight for the Wolves. Scratches, Michael Davies, Evan Ober, Christian Hansen, and Alexander Bolduc. So Taylor's dad, Mark, is Mark, starting. Oh, sorry. Hey, he'd like that. <laughs> Tonight's All-State Colt Center matchup. All-State, Chicago's own good hand. Matt Climey, last start was three weeks ago against the Griffins. He gets the call here tonight. He suffered a 3-2 loss that night to Tom McCollum and the Griffins. McCollum gets the start this evening <laughs> for Grand Rapids. John Anderson telling us before the game, his team is on a roll so far. The biggest adjustment on the road. They're playing quicker and getting the puck up ice. Jeff Blashill's team, we mentioned, has won eight of the last nine. They had a seven-game winning streak snap Wednesday in Milwaukee, but were victorious last night over the Rockford Ice Hogs. Brett Iverson and Joe Sullivan, the two referees this evening. I guess I was excited to, talking to Taylor prior to the game about uh, his dad last night in Milwaukee as we interviewed him and mm -hmm. uh, asked if his dad had watched, and he said yes. And maybe the fact that Chris Chelios is in the house and we didn't have a clue about it. Yes, good to see. Chris Chelios, who ended his professional career playing with the Wolves, although when he was getting inducted in the Hall of Fame, there's a lot of talk that he might go to Europe and join his two kids that are getting ready to finish their college hockey at Michigan State. And if there's an opportunity to go the Gordie Howe route wow. and play with his two kids, he would do so in Europe. I thought you were going to say he was going to wear a Wolves jersey into the Hall. <laughs> Donate blood, save lives. As Bull breaks oh. and shoots, he scores! Grand Rapids opens up the scoring on Sproul's fifth of the season. We often talk about goaltenders today and the style they play, and this is exactly what we talk about. Goaltenders dropping down on bad angles, and they just give up a lot of net. And Ryan Sproul's shot is precise. It's on the near side and up and over the shoulder of Climey with not a lot of room, quite honestly, there. And I really believe as a goaltender, I mean, this is the styles they play, but if you just stand there, there's nowhere to shoot. But when you drop down, there's an opening, and Sproul finds it. That's a beautiful shot. I'm not sure if he even meant that. I think he did. He scored 20 goals in 50 games as a defenseman with Sault Ste. Marie last year in the Ontario Hockey League. Yeah, that's probably the case. Sproul, a bouncy puck, and a coin nearly sprung it ahead for a shot-handed chance for Tyler Shattuck. Broken up and cleared out by a coin, so he made plays at two sides of the rink in the matter of five seconds. Well, that's the thing. He didn't... Uh, kind of admire what he was trying to do initially. He stayed with the play. A lot of guys might get a little peeved at uh, the fact that he didn't make the pass to spring his partner, but he stayed with the play and uh, ended up being a big part of it to get it down the second time. 20 seconds to go on the power play. Long play took it away. Short-handed. He scores! Long play assisted on a shorty last night. He scores his first shorty of the season to tie the game. Incredible. Boy, this is so simple and so easy. And I think a lot of goaltenders today think you're just going to stop and steer away when a goalie's playing the puck. And Lancre goes right after his stick. This is a real good play. And uh, last night we thought he scored the shorthanded goal in Milwaukee. There's the strip of the puck. And what a wrap that is. Sheer determination. you got to love the work ethic. What we have seen from Nathan Lancre in the last couple of weeks. Missed one game with a bit of a strain in the upper body. But... Uh, Scored his first goal in Charlotte and has been very strong ever since. Second shorthanded goal in Long Prey's career, second of the season. And back to back games now, the Wolves have scored a shorthanded goal coming into tonight's contest. The Griffins were one of just eight teams that had not yielded a shorthanded goal against this season. Knocked down by Cody Beach. Beach playing his second game of the goal, centering pass on the front, taken away by Spool. Right under the table, poking in that center. He'll push it towards Matt Clowney. Clowney swings it ahead for Beach and out to center. Grabbed by Long Prey. Uses his speed. Now slams in the brakes. Looks across the ring. And it's off of Kate Pearson. Yeah. Right turn from him. He shoots. He scores! There's a friendly bounce. And a drama gives the Wolves a 2-1 lead with his first of the year. You know where this play starts? It starts with Matt Climey. 
He sees the openness on the right side of the ice. There's some bodies changing, and he moves his puck up very quickly. Cody Beach also makes a very strong move with the puck. He head mins it to Longpre. That is Nathan Longpre now making the initial pass. And yes, it is a favorable bounce off a shin pad all the way down to Andrana, who has an empty net. Is he thanking the Russian gods yeah, there? Yeah, maybe. Huh? <laughs> McCollum well out thinking this shot was coming from the high slot. And the carom off the shin pads all the way down to the corner at the angle for Andrana. Room now for Fairchuk. Looking at her front. Too far in front of Harper. Ends up back with Matt Carey. Deep free asking. Now Lock controls. Moving parts again to the Wolves power play and an opening for Matt Carey. Settles wide, fires, blasts it off the shin guards of Callahan. Callahan could clear it past Matt Carey. Now McCullum comes up to play. Knocked down at the line. Harper sends it back to the half wall. Lock up top for Fairchuk. Back to the asking. Shoots his goal. There was so much talk about this team trying to find a quarterback and Kate Fairchild has kind of settled in at times with some smart plays and the right decisions and this is exactly what have been waiting for. A nice little seam pass. All starts with Yaskin in the corner, moves it up and there's Yaskin coming out of nowhere and Fairchild finds him. That is so hard to defend because you're watching the puck and where it's going and everybody's moving with the flow of the play. And Yaskin, who started it down in the corner, appears out of nowhere, and Fairchild's bottom. That's a perfect pass and a nice little redirect. So, Kane Fairchild playing his fifth game of the season with the Wolves has two assists. We've talked about it before, coming off of major knee surgery. Looking pretty comfortable there, and boy, can he survey the open space. Alquist will move into the offensive end. The defenseman stops in the corner. Played off to the forward man in the park. That's McIntyre firing it wide. Now Jordan Tutu control it to the point. Page, a tip on in front, and the Viffen score. It was McIntyre tipping it past Climbing, who never saw it. It's McIntyre's first of the season. In just his sixth game, he's been battling some injuries. One of the reasons why you need to keep the play in the offense's own, the Wolves do, because this is just a quick play and a couple of nice shifts consecutively with uh, a good puck rotation. Bodies moving around, Page shot, and it glances off the pant and changes direction, goes to the glove hand side, and I don't think uh, Matt Climby at all knew where this was after it makes contact. And what a change there. Is it McIntyre 26? Yep. Gets this? Yeah, so last night Jake Allen had one uh, very similar off his own uh, defenseman, Taylor Chorney, that changed direction in a very similar same sort of area, a little glancing blow off of Pant and a huge redirect. I think he even surprised a little bit with the way he has played defensively and the role he is becoming accustomed to more with his team. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in his years with Hershey when he was dominating and he didn't do a lot of this in the defensive zone. You know, and I don't mean that negatively against him. I'm sure, sure there was others that were in that mode for that team. Centering pass broken up. Ty Ratty trying to pressure it out to center. It's turned over and it stays in for Grand Rapids. A chance out in front and they score! Thomas Yurko's team leading ninth of the year has tied it at three. I thought that might happen. As soon as I saw Shield step up, he was way too far ahead of the play. you got to have a guy back. There's got to be a safety valve in case something happens. And they took off out of the zone a little bit too early, and it ended up being a two-on-one, and this puck just squeaks in at the last second. Here's Shields pitching up. He misses the puck. It's a two-on-one. And the play itself is a beauty, and maybe a funny carom in favor of Yurko as it went off his skate. And to his stick hand, there it is. He fans on the initial shot, but he stays with it. And that's a goal scorer there hanging on and finding a seam to throw that puck into tie. But uh, just going back to what I was talking about, you got to be smart. You cannot overskate plays. you got to be back in position on the defensive side. Hogan at the point. Lantico tip wide out in front. Hogan chases it down. Off of climbing. And to the line. Page has it there. Back to Emerton. Emerton trying to spin away from Keith the coin. Page helps out the forward. Cut off though by Redner, and he flips it high and out. Nice. Good hang time, too, and that's a big Oh, here we go. Porter gets to it first. It was a oh. restricted area, nearly banked it in off of McCollum. Kept in now by Wampre. Wampre to Chorney. Chorney a close low. He scores! The second short in the game for the Wolves. They lead for the three. What
What a nice play by Nathan Andre. What a game he's having. Taylor Chorney had so much time. He came late. And I'll tell you what, first of all, the puck is set down. Nobody comes back to help out Thomas McCollum, and he can't get out to get the puck. So Porter does the right thing. He almost surprises McCollum. But quite honestly, the Griffins never got themselves back into the action. They were slow changing, I think, and that's what you look at. If you're the Griffins coach, these guys just came back very lackadaisical to get off the ice, thinking, well, we're still in the power play, and the Wolves took advantage of that. They headed all the way up the ice and were quick to get to the puck, pounced on it, made a really good play, and Chorney, the end result, scores a big goal. How about the penalty kill of Porter and Longpoint? <laughs> they have picked up points in the last two games. Three points apiece, shorthanded. Goals back at full strength. Their second shorthanded goal of the game has regained the lead. Chorney's first of the year, and that was bar down. And now Nyquist moves in. 40 seconds to go. Nyquist put it on that. Find it the save. Rebound still loose, and it ends up at the sideboards. Back deep now. It's here for touch pass. Out in front for Nyquist. He couldn't get to it. Block. Reached in to break it up. Yep. Back to Nyquist. He'll kick it to his stick. He really it up top. Pace lets it go. Redirect. Out in front was wide by the Griffins forward driving through the slot. That was Everton. Corey Locke trying to clear. Pitching was goal. That holds his own. A dozen seconds ago, back behind the net. Out in front for Everton. Hooked up by Yaskin. Wolves get it to line, but not out. Scroll puts it out in front. Off the bodies. And time will run out. The Wolves win on home ice. Matt Climey. A well deserved congratulations. 4 3 Chicago tonight. There was a lot of breath being held there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you got to get the puck out. First and foremost, your thoughts can't be anything to do with the goaltender. Just make sure it's chipped out. And the Wolves had three or four chances and did not. And because of that, it was a scary number of chances against. A very good plays by Matt Climey protecting. I thought this was a goal. What a redirect. The Wolves had four guys too high. Nobody really helping out down low. And that's what happens. You get tired. You start moving towards the puck and not paying attention to those details and things that are going on around you. Uh, but uh, lo and behold, they come up with a huge victory. And how about the fact that they come back after a six-game road trip, win in five, and win that first game at home, which is usually very tough to do.